Good day everybody, how are you all doing? This is Dr. Nandi. Today we are going to talk about formula for confidence interval for the mean. But before I want to get started, uh, I'd like to mention that in my YouTube channel at You Can Do Math, I have solved all kinds of stat problems just for you. So if you subscribe to my channel, you'll have free access to all the problems that I've solved just for you. Okay. We want to estimate the population mean. Just a minute. We want to estimate the population mean with C or 1 minus alpha percent level of confidence. So I've drawn the diagram for standard normal curve. My C level is the confidence level I will have in the interval that I will have in, that I will construct. My confidence level, if it is 95% confidence level, that means I'll be 95% confident that the interval will contain the actual population proportion. And it is the area in the center of the standard normal curve. Okay, so C level is the confidence level that I select. C is equal to 1 minus alpha, where alpha is called level of significance. If C level is 0.95, then alpha is 1 minus C or 1 minus 0.95 or 0 0.05. Okay. What is alpha? Alpha is the maximum probability that I will make an error. Okay. So we will be 95% confident that the interval will construct, will contain the actual population mean. Okay, if the area in the center is 0.95, then the total area under the standard normal curve is 1. The area in the two tails is 1 minus 0.95 or 0 0.05, which is alpha. Because the standard normal curve is symmetric, area in the left tail is equal to area in the right tail. So we'll divide alpha by 2. Okay, alpha by 2 to get 0 0.05 by 2 divided by 2 is 0 0.025, which is the area in each term. We can find out these values of minus C alpha by 2 and positive Z alpha by 2. Minus Z alpha by 2 and Z alpha by 2 are called critical values of Z because they uh, separating the most probable area in the center where the population mean will fall from the least probable region where the population mean will not fall. We will use TI-84 calculator to find this minus Z alpha by 2. So uh, we use, uh, we press the second button in the calculator, then we will press the verse button, then we will scroll down with the down arrow key to number 3, which is in norm, and we will enter. It will first ask us for an area. This is the area in the left tail, which is 0 0.025. Remember, this is a standard normal curve, so mu is 0, sigma is 1. And we will go down to PEST, put the cursor on PEST and hit enter and enter. And we'll get the critical value of Z, uh, minus Z alpha by 2 is minus 1.96. Then by symmetry, because the left half of a standard normal curve is equal to the right half, is positive Z alpha by 2 is positive 1.96 by symmetry. Okay, now I have drawn the sampling distribution of X bar. That is the probability distribution of X bar, X bar on the horizontal axis, relative frequency or probability on the vertical axis, okay? So, <laughs> again, in the center, we have the C level, which is equal to 1 minus alpha, and area in two tails. Each tail is alpha by 2. So, area in each tail is alpha by 2, okay? So, this is minus C alpha by 2. This is positive Z alpha by 2. Remember, the mean of the sampling distribution, mu x bar, is equal to mu population mean. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is also called standard error, is population standard deviation divided by square root of n. Okay, This is called standard error, sigma x bar, which is nothing but the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So from the definition of the standard normal variable, z alpha by 2, is how far the sample mean is located from the population mean x bar minus mu and standardized or divided by the standard error of the sampling distribution which is sigma divided by square root of n 
So from this equation, we can get x bar equal to mu plus z alpha by 2 times sigma square root of n, sigma divided by square root of n. Also in the left, the critical value minus z alpha by 2 is x bar minus mu divided by sigma divided by square root of n. So x bar is equal to mu minus z alpha by 2 times sigma by square root of n. So these two expressions give the two boundaries. The second expression mu minus z alpha by 2 sigma divided by square root of n is the lower boundary of the interval within which x bar will fall. The upper boundary being mu plus z alpha by 2 times sigma divided by square root of n. So with alpha or 1 minus alpha level of confidence, we can state that the sample mean will fall between mu minus z alpha by 2 times sigma divided by square root of n and the upper boundary mu plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n. We write it as uh, uh, mu minus z alpha by 2 sigma divided by square root of n less than x bar less than mu plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n. Okay, but we are interested in finding the confidence interval for population mean. So what we will do is we will subtract a mu from all to get minus z alpha by 2 times sigma divided by square root of n. X bar was in the center minus mu and the mu is gone. Z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n. Now we will subtract minus x bar from all to get minus x bar minus z alpha by 2 times sigma by n less than minus u less than remember we are subtracting minus x bar so minus x bar plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n. Now we will divide all by minus 1 in inequality when we divide by minus 1 the inequality direction changes. So the first thing first item is our first expression is minus x bar divided by minus 1 is x bar minus divided by minus 1 plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n less than because it's divided by minus 1 it becomes greater than mu again less than becomes greater than minus x bar divided by minus 1 is x bar and plus z alpha by 2 times sigma by square root of n divided by minus 1 is minus z alpha by 2 times sigma divided by square root of n. So <laughs> it is as if this x bar plus z alpha by 2 sigma by square root of n is the highest value and x bar minus z alpha by 2 times sigma divided by square root of n is the lowest value, lowest possible value of mu. So rearranging will bring the lower boundary to the left x bar minus z alpha by 2 times sigma by square root of n. Okay. And it, it, remember it is a lower boundary, so it is less than mu less than the upper boundary which is x bar plus z alpha by 2 times sigma by square root of n. Okay, so this x bar minus z alpha by 2 times sigma by square root of n is the lower boundary of our confidence interval for the population mean and x bar plus z alpha by 2 times sigma by square root of n is the upper boundary. The whole thing is the upper boundary of the confidence interval for mu. Now this term z alpha by 2 multiplied by sigma by square root of n. z alpha by 2 is the critical value of z. Sigma by square root of n is a standard error or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So this term z alpha by 2 multiplied by sigma divided by square root of n is called the margin of error. So basically mu falls between x bar minus margin of error and x bar plus margin of error. Of course, the margin of error will depend on the confidence interval level, that is the z alpha by 2, and it will also depend on the standard deviation of the population and the square root of the sample size. So I'll stop here today. If you have any question, you can always write me a comment, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button. 